Chris Lennon. Members of an outlaw motorcycle gang have been arrested by police at a traffic stop in Catherine. Drug and organized crime gang task force members have seized a motorcycle belonging to a member of the Descendants Outlaw Motorcycle Gang under anti-hooning legislation. An off-duty police officer witnessed a 40-year-old male conduct burnouts on Stewart Highway around 5 p.m. on Sunday. The rider was participating in the Descendants OMCG National Run, which was traveling to Darwin. The 40-year-old was identified by police at a vehicle control point in Catherine. During a search of the mail support vehicle, police located a digital camera which allegedly had footage of the burnout from the previous day. The male's motorcycle was seized for a period of 48 hours and he was issued a traffic infringement notice for drive vehicle causing loss of traction. The OMCG member is now without his motorcycle until he can pay the towing and impound cost. Additionally, police also identified several offenses committed by the group of approximately 21 OMCG riders and associates. Three full patch OMCG members, males aged 49, 56, and 62, were arrested at the vehicle control point. The 49-year-old male was charged with possession of Schedule 1 drug less than trafficable quantity, unauthorized possession of a Schedule 4 dangerous drug, possess thing to administer drug. I can't believe that, uh, this off of a camera. The 56-year-old male was charged with driving prohibited drug in blood after returning a positive secondary saliva sample to methamphetamines and cocaine. He was also charged with possess less than trafficable quantity of meth. The 62-year-old male was charged with possession of less than trafficable quantity of methamphetamines after police located a clip seal bag of powder in his shirt. A 38-year-old male was issued with an infringement notice for fail to have an approved helmet and an 18-year-old male received an infringement for drive an unregistered motor vehicle. A 23-year-old male was issued a notice to appear for, an, for unauthorized possession of Schedule 4 dangerous drug. A further two motorcycles were defected for bald types and damaged suspension. Talking about reaching on behalf of cops, man. I feel for you guys and us. By Thumb Forbes, a big one here. Harley Davidson, which has been embroiled in an off-again, on-again battle with President Donald Trump over moving some of its production overseas yesterday lowered its expectations for global sales this year, continuing a downhill trend as it fails to attract younger riders to its century-old hogs in the U.S. and European markets. Well, the Milwaukee-based motorcycle maker expects to ship 212,000 to 217,000 bikes worldwide this year, that range is 5,000 lower than the company's previous forecast and well short of last year's total of 228,000. If Harley's down B outlook holds, it will be the fifth straight year of declines for the company, whose sales peaked at 267,000 bikes in 2014. Carlton English writes for the New York Post. On the positive side, if there is one, Harley reported stronger sales in China and other Asian markets and said U.S. sales should improve in the second half of the year. Positive news that offset a cut to its full year motorcycle forecast and sent shares up 5.3%. Reuters 
Cy Wright, CEO Matt Lebedich, credited the performance to the company's decision to set up a plant in Thailand to serve the Southeast Asian market as well as China. The decision had drawn flack from both Trump as well as Harley's labor unions. The move, however, has allowed the American icon to circumvent the region's tariff barriers and price its bikes more competitively, resulting in a 77% jump in sales in Southeast Asia during the June quarter, Cy adds. Quote, We are in a tough environment, Levetich tells the Wall Street Journal's Austin Hufford and Mikhail Maidenberg It's going to take time. We are very confident that what we are doing is working. Harley wants to sell half of its motorcycles overseas by 2027, up from 42% last year. It is introducing new models including an electric-powered motorcycle, racing-style sports bikes, and so-called adventure bikes that can be used on an unpaved trail as well as a paved street. The company expects to release its $30,000 all-electric motorcycle called the Livewire in September. Hufford and Maidenberg continued, Harley's financial troubles are nothing new, but it's a focus on other non-U.S. markets is. The company has pushed to gain more market share in China and the rest of Asia. Places where motorcycles are much more a part of everyday life. Ooh, what a kick in the balls here. Lebetich has stated in the past the company plans to eventually derive half of the Harley-Davidson's revenue from outside the U.S. Kyle Hyatt reminds us on CNN's Roadshow blog. Hyatt summarizes that Harley's optimism for the rest of the year is rooted in its ex- expectations for the live wire, which will be its first electric vehicle. I think it's going to be a bomb. The live wire situation is one that could honestly go either way for HD. The motorcycle is expensive, unlike any of its other bikes in terms of riding dynamics and performance. And of course, it's electric. Though we didn't really like it when we had it out on the roads of Oregon, if its core demographic fails to embrace the model once the tech-savvy early adapters get their pre-orders, Harley's outlook could become less sunny in a hurry, Hyatt continues, which I think it will. It's not going to sell at that price. That core demographic, though, has been more the source of Harley's woes in recent years rather than the solution to its slump. Quote, the bottom line is that they continue struggling with baby boomers and it's not enough to offset the declines we're seeing. According to Edward Jones analyst Brian Yarbrough tells CNBC the network's Shama writes, well, bigger bikes are falling out of favor with younger riders, I have been saying that, Sales of the industry's larger bike with engines of 601 cubic centimeters or bigger fell 4.9% in the second quarter versus a year earlier. Harley said, all but one of the 36 models it sells are at least that big with some hogs weighing in around 1,000 pounds. This again, Shama reports, they need to see better growth with middle-aged and young people and their smaller bikes. They need to offset their 600cc plus decline, Jarbrill said. I told you guys, they only got 50% of the big market. I'll give them credit, they're not just sitting on their hands and waiting for things to change. Some of the things they're trying and starting are going to work. <laughs> the million dollar question is whether that's enough to stop the sales decline, Jarbrill adds. Here's another ideal. How about working with scientists who are developing ways to make age cells younger, to keep more boomers riding and buying into their 100s? Yeah, everybody's doubtful about Harley Davidson right now. This is a bad one. Philip Marcello, Boston, Massachusetts lawmakers opened and then abruptly suspended their inquiry Monday 
into troubles at the State Motor Vehicle Department that were exposed by a crash that killed seven motorcyclists. The Legislators Joint Committee on Transportation voted the recess just minutes into its oversight hearing after Governor Charlie Baker's administration didn't make some state officials available for testimony. Huh. Citing its on, own ongoing investigation. Yeah, we know how that's going to go. Democratic State Rep. William Struss, the committee's co-chair, said the panel would reconvene the hearing only when the administration provided more information and witnesses it sought. Yeah, it's going to be cover-up on this governor's part. Quote, We owe it under the horrible circumstances of this case to find out information and get the witnesses, he said. The hearing was prompted by a June 21st crash that killed members or supporters of the Jarheads, a New England motorcycle club that includes Marines and their spouses. Connecticut officials twice alerted Massachusetts about a drunken driving arrest against a driver involved in this crash, but the registry failed to suspend the West Springfield man's license before the deadly crash in Randolph, New Hampshire. Massachusetts officials later revealed the registry had been storing notifications of serious out-of-state driving violations since March of 2018 instead of acting on them. Baker's administration has said an ongoing review has led to some 1,600 drivers having their license suspended. The governor has also proposed legislation raising the state's standards for commercial driver's licenses above federal standards. The driver, 23, has pleaded not guilty to negligent homicide and remains behind bars. Ahead of Monday's hearing, Transportation Secretary Stephanie Pollack warned lawmakers that she and acting registrar Jamie Tesler we're prepared to testify on their response to the scandal, but not the failures that caused it, which are the subject of an independent investigation. This is going to go on for years and nothing's going to happen. A report from auditing firm Grant Borden is expected in mid-September. Quote, I will not mince words. The Registry of Motor Vehicles missed the opportunity to revoke this man's license to drive before the June 21st accident, she said in a prepared statement to the committee, which she wasn't given a chance to deliver. Well, I am not ready to talk in any detail about the people who failed to do their jobs and how they will be held accountable, but I assure you, you, oh man, you assure nobody, man. Tesla, his prayer remarks said the registry has enacted reforms since he took over in late June from Aaron Devaney, the former registrar who resigned days after the crash. The agency has created a unit to handle communications with other state motor vehicle agencies, Tesla said. It is also reviewing all 5.2 million licensed drivers in Massachusetts to ensure records accurately reflect any actions taken by other states. That process will take at least several more weeks, he said. Well, we recognize that the steps we are taking to address those failures do not make up for past shortcomings. Tesla said in his prepared remarks, which he also was not able to deliver to lawmakers. House Speaker Robert DeLeo called on the administration to participate, quote, without exception or qualification in the committee's work. No, they got a big black eye. That's why they're doing this. The legislators' oversight role should not and will not be subjugated to that of an outside auditing firm, he said in a statement. The Transportation Department responded that it has already provided hundreds of pages of documents as part of the committee's inquiry. 
Those include records related to the registry's new and old technology systems, as well as the agency's organizational charts, staffing levels, and contract with FAST Enterprises, the company that created its new technology system, which launched last year. The department said that other documents will be released once sensitive information is redacted, but that others won't be provided until Grant Thornton's review is complete. 